Good morning, and welcome to the 32nd commencement of St. Patrick St. Vincent Catholic High School, and the 140th commencement since the first graduating class of St. Vincent Ferrer High School in 1880. And thank you for joining us remotely in an effort to keep us safe as we endure the coronavirus. Today we honor the commitment and sacrifice of our parents, grandparents, guardians, relatives, and friends that have made this day possible. Of course, this is also a special day for the faculty and staff who have worked hard with these young people throughout the past four years. Ladies and gentlemen, if possible, please stand for the prayer, followed by the Star Spangled Banner. Anna Gomez will lead us in our invocation. Let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good and gracious God, this is the day, the day you have made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the culmination of years of work, years filled with challenges and triumphs, learning and laughter, friendships and growth. We thank you, God, for our time here at St. Patrick St. Vincent High School. We thank you for the gift of family, friends, teachers, coaches, counselors, and anyone else who has inspired us, supported us, and most importantly, those who have touched our lives. We thank you, God, for the gift of education that has filled us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. May what we have learned by being here at St. Patrick St. Vincent High School allow us to go forth into this world and be complex thinkers, effective communicators, quality producers, and most importantly, men and women of character and compassion that we are destined to be. We ask you, God, that you guide us and be with us as we move on to the next chapter of our lives. May we not only arise today, but arise every day as we use our gifts and talents that you have given us and use them to go forth into this world and make a difference. We ask that you continue to bless us with love, protection, mercy, strength, and wisdom. And may we never forget that you, God, stand with us and that we shall never fear about what lies ahead, but trust in you as we embark on this new journey that awaits for us. For you, God, have plans to prosper us, plans to give us hope and a future. In your name we pray, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The St. Patrick St. Vincent Choristers, accompanied by the SPSV alumni, will now perform the Star Spangled Banner under the direction of Mr. Ryan Lee. Right now, I am honored to introduce to you a very special guest. Please welcome the most reverend Jaime Soto, Bishop of the Diocese of Sacramento, who will now give the commencement address. The psalmist sang the following words in Psalm 91. Say to the Lord, my refuge and fortress, my God in whom I trust. To those who are able to say these words with confidence and abide in the merciful shadow of the Almighty, the psalmist then declared, You shall not fear 
the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that roams in darkness, nor the plague that rages at noon. Listen carefully to these wise words of Scripture. The psalmist does not say, we will be spared from these unpredictable calamities. He simply says, you shall not fear. There is a plague that is ravaging the world. Even in the brilliant light of noon, the virus lurks unseen throughout the whole world. As we began this new decade in January 2020, no one could have believed that an unknown virus would paralyze an economy, shutter all social activity, and smother the lives of thousands. Among the still mounting deaths are mostly elderly and other vulnerable individuals. The loss of their lives and the uncertain risks assumed by many caretakers and first responders in the face of this prowling pandemic casts a sober shadow over this glad gathering. We have all become more humble, more sensitive about the world in which we live. The commencement exercises for the graduating class of 2020 are not meant to be an act of defiance against this unpredictable viral foe. We come together through these technological means with a sense of mission and purposeful resolve. These past four years, you have been privileged to dwell in a sacred sanctuary dedicated to helping you grow in knowledge as well as the wisdom and mercy of God. You have been infected with a curious passion to understand the world in which we live. You have been exposed to many traditions and ideas about truth and beauty. Whether you know it or not, the Lord Jesus has touched you and filled you with his grace. Through your teachers, your friends, family, and all who support you, you have contracted a restless desire to share what has been given you with a generous heart. There is still a need for physical distancing, which we are respectfully implementing as we celebrate these commencement exercises. I hope you have learned from your time at St. Patrick, St. Vincent High School that we cannot live with moral distancing. The pandemic has taught us a harsh lesson about the urgency to care for one another. To leave behind anyone only risks making us all the more vulnerable to anything or anyone that threatens the common good and dignity of humanity. The spread of the coronavirus has been aggravated by other social viruses of racism, poverty, and the social isolation of the most vulnerable among us, the unborn, the mentally ill, and the elderly. We cannot distance ourselves from them. There may be essential workers, but there are no non-essential people. Together with Christ, we are all one body. We can never predict what future calamities, personal or social, will threaten us, just as no one could have foreseen what we are now enduring. Predictions can be the folly of the arrogant. The schooling of the last few months has lectured the whole world on humility, and we best pay heed. Humility is not a weakness. It can be a great strength, especially in time of adversity. Be assured, we all have such moments. Humility opens us to the possibility of trust. Trust in one another and trust in the one who created us. Today holds out a future of grace for those willing to abide under the shade of the Almighty. May I conclude with the closing words of the psalm with which I began this reflection. In these words, God speaks directly to you, the graduates of 2020. 
listen, learn, and believe. Because you cling to me, I will deliver thee. Because you know my name, I will set you on high. You will call upon me and I will answer. I will be with you in distress. I will deliver you and give you honor. With length of days, I will satisfy you and fill you with my saving power. Amen. Que así sea. Congratulations. Graduating class of 2020. Thank you, Bishop. Now I would like to introduce Madeline Ogden and Gabriel Silvera, who will give the salutatory address. Good morning, family, staff, and students. It is an honor to be able to speak to you today and represent the class of 2020 with my co-salutatorian, Gabe Silvera. Before I begin the speech, I want to give a quick shout out to my two wonderful parents. I hope you know how much your sacrifice means to me. This is for you. It is an honor and somewhat surprising that I speak to you today as co-salutatorian. I want to recognize the hard work, dedication, and intelligence demonstrated by John Ray San Pedro and Madeline Ogden, which resulted in them having the two highest grade point averages in the senior class and being selected valedictorian and salutatorian. What makes being co-salutatorian so special to me is that I was selected by you, my fellow classmates. We are so fortunate to have studied together, learned together, laughed together, and bonded together in such a compassionate, faith-filled environment. When I came to SPSV, I only knew a handful of students. I remember my dad asking me during freshman year what new friends I had made and who they were. I told my dad I felt that everyone was my friend because everyone in my class was cool. For the most part, everyone supports each other, respects each other, and gets along. I think this is a direct reflection of the Christian values that are so much a part of our daily lives here at SPSV. Jesus taught us to love your neighbor as yourself. We are so fortunate that we have been able to learn in an environment where we can be reminded of Jesus' very important teachings in addition to the strong academics that we receive. So it is only right that each of us thank our parents for making the financial sacrifices necessary to send us to such a great school. Ordinary, a word meaning with no special or distinctive features. Ordinary, our class is anything but. For the past four years, the class of 2020 has undergone every natural disaster possible. First the drought, then the fires, now the pandemic, and throughout each year, a decimation of the number of people left in our class. We've gotten smaller over the years, with so-and-so going to this school and their friend going to that school. We've had a lot of days off campus, both with the fires a couple of years ago and today with the virus. And we've definitely been the class that got in trouble the most over the past four years. However, in the last four years, we have accomplished so much as a class. Our football and men's basketball programs have won state championships. Our football, men's basketball, and women's golf teams have, won, have all won two NCS championships. Our women's basketball and baseball programs have won one NCS championship. Men's volleyball and baseball have won four TCAL championships. Women's golf has won three TCAL, three TCAL championships, while wrestling and softball have won two. Men's basketball, women's basketball, baseball, men's water polo, women's water polo, women's soccer, and women's volleyball have each won one TCAL championship. Our cheer squad has won top banana multiple times, which is first place in cheer competitions, as well as multiple leadership plaques. Our tennis and cross country teams have also been successful, and our men's soccer team got in the win column too. Our drama department has had hit musicals such as You're in Town, Mamma Mia, and Chicago. Our choristers have been awarded in national competitions and invited to sing at Pearl Harbor, and our women's choir earned a gold ranking. Not to mention, we had the best rally entrances as well as the best spirit. Who can forget Diaz screaming at the top of the bleachers with a crutch in his hands, or Jalen always carrying more $1 bills than a bank? Our class is one of the most accomplished classes ever at SPSV. However, in spite of these accomplishments, we've had hardships too. High school hasn't been easy for us, and yet here we are. It might not have felt like it, but the past four years have gone by in the blink of an eye. I can still remember being dropped off at school by my mom and having to walk to Starbucks after because none of my friends had cars. I remember going to freshman year math with Mr. Noons and thinking that no class could get any harder than that. And most importantly, 
I remember showing up to Mr. Clavel's class on Halloween and seeing a six foot tall man with a horse head on. It's the little things like this that made high school memorable to me, but what made it unique was each of you. Being such a small class, you have to, at the very least, bump into someone in the hallway once during high school. Even if you never talk to that person, you soon become aware of the distinctive features that make them them. I found through interacting with each of you that you each have something very special to offer to this world. Just like your class, each of you is unique, with a different narrative to tell and a different story to write. Even today, when we walk out these doors, not all of us are embarking on the same path. Some of us are going to college close to home, some far from home, and some have chosen a different path altogether. Some of us will be going places we've never even seen before, and some of us to places we go to to hang out on the weekends. And while some of us will be serving our country, others will be leaving it to return back home. Regardless of the path you are choosing to embark on, the story of this class and the people in it has been anything but ordinary. In the face of adversity, the diversity of this class has proven time and time again that no matter what life throws at us, we have the capability to come out both unscathed and unfazed, ready to take on whatever lies ahead. I know our high school experience is not ending the way that many of us had hoped it would. We are a close-knit group, and I know that we would have loved to be in the same space, sharing the special moment with one another and with our families. We will cherish the memories we had together, for we know there will never be another class as special as 2020. As a class, we will be remembered forever. Our story will be written in the history books, and when we have children one day, we will tell them of the time we're living in and how we fought to get through it. As we approach a new chapter of our lives, we have many challenges yet to face, but from what I have witnessed over the past four years, I have no doubt in my mind that each of you will overcome them. So if anyone ever asks you, what makes you so special? Tell them, I'm no ordinary person, I'm from the class of 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Madeline and Gabe. John Ray San Pedro will now give the valedictory address. Good morning, fellow Bruins. As the class of 2020 valedictorian, it is my privilege to be able to speak on behalf of the amazing group of people we have become. Just as my fellow salutatorians highlighted, we've all been through both the best of times and the worst of times. And fortunately, we are still here to celebrate it all together. We have all learned, laughed, loved, and cried. With these experiences, I can guarantee we have gained different insights and life lessons that we will carry into our futures. I would like to share some of these personal insights I have attained throughout my educational career and my time here at SPSV. Philosopher Thomas Aquinas once said that three things are necessary for the salvation of man. To know what he ought to believe, to know what he ought to desire, and to know what he ought to do. Aquinas describes what is needed in order to live a proper adult life, what is needed for the salvation of all. This moment is an opportunity to share what I personally believe is central to Aquinas' words. We begin with the word belief. Believing is accepting something as true. It is to have faith and confidence in what is real. To me, it is the first step to doing and achieving anything in life. Whether it be in yourself, in others, in ideas, in God, believing is required in order to reach the highest levels of understanding and action. When looking back throughout all these past years, the confidence and belief that I had in others and in myself is what truly allowed me to reach the spot where I am today. This isn't a matter of thinking that you are better than everyone else 
or that you are perfect. It is simply giving yourself the courage to take that first step into something greater. Of course, having full self-confidence or having complete trust in others is not always going to be the case. I've had doubts when others would discourage my abilities or when I couldn't reach my own expectations. There would be the shame culture where people, including myself, would be barraged with negative remarks for simply trying to excel in school or other things. I can remember being called out for trying too hard when doing well in what I loved. I've always been on this unwanted pedestal where making one little mistake will be amplified by the shocks of other people. Although these words may have been lighthearted, they would make me uncertain about whether trying to succeed was the right thing to do while trying to keep a perfect reputation. The lesson to know is that when the light begins to fade within ourselves, we must try our best to understand that someone out there is supporting you, believing in you. You don't have to be perfect. God will always be there, accepting you for who you are and encouraging you to be the best you could be. Your friends, family, loved ones, classmates, acquaintances, all want to see you succeed and be happy with yourself. Do not ever think that putting 110% into anything you do is trying too hard because there is never too much effort in doing what you love. Learn from your mistakes and continue to persevere forward even when times are the most difficult. At the same time, be proud of all that you have achieved and all the good you have done in your life. I firmly believe that each and every one of us can reach any level of success as long as we can give that same belief to ourselves. Believe in the you that believes in, in yourself. Once we can show that belief in ourselves and in others, only then can we begin to realize what we truly desire. It is important for one to know what he or she wants in life. It gives us a purpose, a goal to live and reach for. One may value things ranging from worldly possessions and success to money and happiness. However, there is one thing that we must always desire and seek for. That is knowledge. Knowledge is the awareness and understanding of anything we can apprehend. It can come in the form such as academics, spirituality, and social relationships. As curious intellectual beings, it is only natural for us to know and learn more and more about the unknown world around us. This is stuff we already know, right? What is not understood by many is the idea that the knowledge we gain is the knowledge that should be shared. If I had to say my biggest regret in my educational career, it wouldn't be about some academic downfall or a wrong decision I made. My biggest regret is the fact that I failed to continually share my knowledge with my peers while emphasizing the importance of learning. People are right when they say that learning the quadratic equation from math class or knowing how to analyze Shakespeare from English class is not going to matter to most of us in 20 years. And I would have to agree. This doesn't mean that this trivial information is the only thing to be gained from a proper education. My biggest takeaways from SPSV aren't the calculus equation I learned, the periodic table I was forced to memorize, but rather what lies deeper within. The passion, 
dedication, love, and support that all the teachers have shown towards their students are what I am going to take away with me. Teachers are not there just to shove down academic content, but because they want us to take in the inner knowledge they have gained throughout their life. What matters more in our education is learning these life lessons, these good habits from those wiser than us. We take that knowledge into a brighter future where we can live happily, eventually passing all we know down to the younger generations. Learning and gaining awareness only results in the betterment of ourselves and all people. Thus, I ask you to grow in your desire in knowledge. Learn something new every day. Share it with those around you. Only then can we know what we really desire, what is truly wrong and right. If we can all follow these simple words, then I can be proud with no regrets. To know what he ought to do. There will come a point where knowledge can only take us so far, where things are completely incomprehensible. In these moments, are we the most lost with no sense of direction? We may feel like we have nothing left to live for. There is, however, always something to live for. St. Thomas Aquinas once said, love takes up where knowledge leaves off. Love takes up where knowledge leaves off. Love really is an interesting concept. We do not require the knowledge of love in order to give and receive it. We can love others even if we do not know who they truly are. Love brings friendships, it brings unity things that belief and knowledge alone cannot bring. Love is the reason why we are here today to celebrate our lives and accomplishments together. You are valued. You are loved. In the end, when there is no more life, when there is no more knowledge, all that will ever be present is love. As the children of God, this is what we are ought to do. We must always act out the loving ways that Jesus taught us, and we must live out all that we know of God's will. Love may not always be something so easy, but just as Jesus persisted in our world, so should we. As we all move forward, wherever you choose to go, fill your lives with love, and most importantly, love one another. Today we find ourselves in such an unfortunate situation. It is a shame that I cannot deliver this speech with everyone here, physically. Despite these inconveniences, I want to reaffirm to you that nothing is taken away from all we have accomplished and learned during our four years at St. Patrick, St. Vincent High School. I could have stood here and spoke about how I hope we can soon get out of this situation and just wish us all off on lives full of happiness and success. To be straightforward, such an easy path is not the reality we will all face moving forward. For some of us, this pandemic may become something that simply passes by and life will return back to the way it is. For others, it may take a long period of time to recover from such a catastrophe. In times like these, all we can promise ourselves is to take all we have learned and utilize it moving forward. Each and every single one of you has a purpose, whether you understand it fully at this moment or you are still searching for it. No matter what happens tomorrow or the next day, or the next day, know that you are not alone. God is always there, guiding you to your ultimate destination, even if you fail to realize it. Families, friends, loved ones are by your side to support you. 
At times it may be easy to forget these people, but at the least promise me this. Remember what makes you unique. Remember what makes you special. Remember what makes you, you. Trust in your beliefs, find your true desires, and always love one another. At the end of it all, you are truly a part of something great. You are great. You are the class of 2020. Thank you. Thank you, John Ray. Please welcome Mrs. Colleen Martin, our principal and interim president. Bishop Soto, graduates, family and friends of graduates, faculty and staff, thank you for joining us today at this socially distant but joyous ceremony. I am Colleen Martin, principal and interim president of St. Patrick St. Vincent Catholic High School, which is now edging to the end of its 150th year of service to God and this amazing community. There has been no single year in the school's history quite like this one. On the other hand, there is no class well prepared to take on challenges of our age like the intelligent, resilient, and loving class of 2020. The school has served the community in amazing ways over the years. For example, during the Spanish flu pandemic from 1918 to 1919. At that time, our old St. Vincent's campus became a naval hospital used to treat those who were infected with the virus. And here we are, 101 years later, facing another devastating, pervasive illness. It has put the world on hold and devastated families and communities with loss and separation. However, my dear class of 2020, you are all wildly intelligent in so many ways. In the past four years, you have been asked to view the world through dozens of different lenses. You see it through the lens of the cause and effect found in mathematics, the sciences, history, economics, government, you understand how to decode world issues and engage in productive, intellectually sound conversation thanks to your English and foreign language teachers. Your technology, business, and marketing courses gave you clear, practical view of the marketplace. You explored the countless joys and heartbreaks that fill our world in the arts and religion courses. Six classes a day for four years one after the other, with teachers who expected you to be able to explain and build upon concepts at a moment's notice. Now let's talk about resilience. It is nothing more than your ability to recover quickly from difficult situations by pushing through barriers. Even when you thought you couldn't and even when doing so seemed unlikely to others. Seniors, I've never met a graduating class with more resilience than yours. For many of you, this became clear in athletics. Some of you came to the school with dreams of making one of our sports teams and leading it to glory. You knew you would set records and win section title after section title. Then you worked out with a varsity team for the first time. You didn't play against kids. You played with highly skilled young adults that were stronger, faster, and smarter than you ever imagined. Maybe that first workout didn't go as well as expected, but the end result was well worth the dedication you put in. For some, perhaps it was a teacher who had to tell you the hard truth that, that becoming great in a subject, not just good, requires discipline and commitment. Maybe a counselor told you to breathe deep and simply ask for help from a teacher. And when you did, improvements, improvements were not just a result of your fine mind, but of your character. Perhaps you did not recognize your own resilience until you entered the end of your senior year, when you found yourself alone and at home 
working independently through distance learning, <clears throat> all while assisting a, young, a younger sibling with their schoolwork and consoling a parent as they face their own fears about this pandemic. <clears throat> but you did it. You are resilient and you can conquer anything. Seniors, your capacity to love is remarkable. You took a class with Miss Arguelles and you know what agape is. It is the most powerful, all-encompassing level of love that humans can experience and offer. It is unshakable. It endures. It reveals to the world your selflessness. My colleagues and I have seen you demonstrate agape. We saw it when you confronted a classmate as they lost loved ones or had to manage hardships at home. We saw you walk classmates to the office when they were ill or carry their bags to class when they were on crutches or in wheelchairs. Think of the time you asked a counselor, a teacher, or an administrator to simply check in with a friend in crisis. Think of the time you gave of yourself to perform Christian service. Reflect on your junior year day trip to the St. Anthony Foundation in San Francisco's Tenderloin, where you served some of our most fragile brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember how you looked them in the eyes, how you smiled and said hello, when so many people will not do so. Think of how you saw them for their humanity. That is agape and you all possess it. Bruins, you already know that our world is divided. You hear it all the time when you see a newscast. You know we are seen as a country that is split by race, money, politics, and so many other things. And now, a pestilence fills the land. But you, this class of students, that has learned to love regardless of what divides, you are the leaders that can get us to a world beyond cruel divisions. You are bright, you are tough, and you are filled with boundless love. Simply put, you can lead us to the promised land where we will love one another as Christ loved his disciples. I will end where I began. The Spanish flu in May 1919. Once the new St. Vincent School was no longer a makeshift Navy hospital, an officer named Captain Breach visited the campus and its children. Here's a little of what he wrote to the school and the students on a letter that was delivered May 15th of that year. My dear friends, one of the happiest days of my life was on May 1st, when you were with me. You were so sweet, so beautiful. My heart went out to you. Seniors, one of the happiest days of my life is today. You are so sweet, so beautiful. My heart and the hearts of all of us at this school go out to you. May God look over you as you lead us forward. Thank you. I am honored to present two of the most prestigious awards that the St. Patrick St. Vincent Catholic High School bestows upon its graduates. The first award is the Brother William F. O'Sullivan Academic Award for General Excellence. It goes to the senior with the highest 
overall academic achievement as measured by grade point average through the second semester of the senior year. Our award winner has taken AP Statistics, AP Calculus, AP Chemistry, AP U.S. History, AP World History, AP U.S. Government and Politics, AP English Language and Composition, AP Literature and Composition, and AP Computer Science A, as well as honor classes in English, Chemistry, Physics, Math, Art, and Spanish. With a cumulative weighted GPA of 4.77, he will be starting at the University of California, Los Angeles in the fall, where he will be majoring in chemical engineering. For his superior academic achievement, the Brother William F. O'Sullivan Award and Scholarship goes to John Ray San Pedro. On to our next award. Monsignor Thomas Kirby served the Diocese of Sacramento for over 50 years. While he was Chancellor of the Diocese, he brought about the planning and building of our school. The Monsignor Thomas A. Kirby Scholarship is presented to the winner of the Order of St. Patrick, St. Vincent for service to church, school, and community for scholarship and for extracurricular participation. This award is going to someone who has demonstrated true Bruin spirit. His teachers describe this student as one of the first students who comes to mind who completely embodies the school prayer on a daily basis. His Catholic faith is solid and is clear from his conversation, and he is grateful for every day he has been given thus far. His desire to learn has been demonstrated in the classroom for the past four years. As he tirelessly worked to understand all of his classroom lessons, he showed his leadership in a variety of ways, including on the football field and on the senior class council. He is a young man who leads by example and has stood up for those who can't and has served those in need. Next year, he will be attending Sonoma State University. I am happy to introduce to you the winner of the Order of St. Patrick St. Vincent, Gabriel Silvera. At St. Patrick St. Vincent Catholic High School, seniors are recognized for superior achievement in the various academic disciplines through the St. Patrick St. Vincent Catholic High School Gold Award. The following seniors have been selected to receive the Gold Award. For Religious Studies, Anna Gomez. For English, August Gowiron. For Math, Nancy Zhao. For science, John Ray San Pedro. For French, Elena Arizal. For social studies, John Ray San Pedro. For art, August Gowiron. For ceramics, Aaliyah Jacob. For choir, Ashley Ibarra. For instrumental music, Elena Arizal. For theater arts, Amber Larkin. For physical education, Isai Contreras. For business and technology, Anna Gomez. Many of our graduates have earned cords of various colors. The gold cords and tassels are for students who are life members of the California Scholarship Federation. Students earn life membership by qualifying for CSF for four of their last six semesters in high school. Besides the gold cord and tassel, each life member gets a lifetime membership certificate, the CSF lamp pin, and a gold seal on their diploma. 
CSF Life Membership is also designated on their high school transcript. Congratulations to our lifetime members. Graduates wearing the blue and gold cord are members of the National Honor Society. Faculty select these members based on scholarship, leadership, service, and citizenship. Congratulations to our NHS members. Pink cords go to our seniors who belong to the Tri-M Music Honor Society. To be a member of this society, which is sponsored by the National Association for Music Education, one must participate in a choral, band, or orchestra program for at least two years. Members must have at least a B average in music, be of good character, foster interest in musical performance, and to encourage wider opportunities for personal musical expression and community service. Congratulations to our Tri-M Music Honor Society members. The rainbow colored cords are worn by the members of the National Art Honor Society. Members of NAHS must maintain a 3.0 GPA and have taken an art class for at least two years. NAHS members have been involved in various creative projects here on campus. The students listed have earned this recognition. The SPSV Christian Service Honor recognizes the students who have gone above and beyond SPSV's Christian Service requirements and are duly recognized here. Students who have served as leaders on student council and campus ministry for three or more years, as well as link crew members who have served for two years are wearing purple cords. Congratulations to these student leaders. The President's Award for Educational Excellence is based on a cumulative GPA of 3.7 and above for seven semesters and scoring in the 85th percentile on the SAT exam in evidence-based reading and writing or math or achieving the 85th percentile on the composite score of the ACT college entrance exam. The students listed have earned this recognition. We are particularly proud of this year's graduating class. Their hard work has paid off in being offered over $1 million in financial aid. Graduating seniors, a class of 94 students, have been accepted to over 138 different colleges and universities across the country. Students sent out 592 applications on average, our students applied to 6.3 colleges per person. In addition, 96% of our seniors have selected to attend college, with 3% joining the armed forces. Of students who applied to a four-year college or university, 97% were accepted to a four-year institution. Of the 72 students who applied to four-year colleges, 83% have chosen to attend. 28% of our students were accepted into the very selective University of California system, with a total of 22 students attending UCLA, UC Berkeley, UC San Diego, UC Davis, UC Santa Cruz, UC Santa Barbara, UC Riverside, and UC Irvine, with an additional 59% of the graduating class being accepted into the California State University system. This year, we have had a large number of students apply to out-of-state colleges and universities with students choosing to attend colleges and universities in Arizona, Hawaii, Idaho, Nevada, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Texas, Washington, and Washington, D.C. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we will introduce virtually the class of 2020. The following students have fulfilled the course of study required by the State of California and St. Patrick's St. Vincent Catholic High School and are hereby awarded their high school diplomas. Teachers Mr. Imperador and Ms. Arguelles have been selected by the senior class to read the names of our graduates. Melanie Abrego. Jacob Rudy 
Adriana, summa cum laude. Aaron and Chetta, summa cum laude. Sebastian Mendoza Anisiete, summa cum laude. Elena Ilagan Arsal, summa cum laude, is a recipient of the Knights of Columbus Leadership Award, which is presented to a student who has demonstrated exceptional leadership ability in and out of school. The awardee must possess Catholic values and have participated in school and parish community activities while maintaining an above average academic achievement. Jaren Baldonado. Angelina Jolie Banez, summa cum laude, is the recipient of the Opus Magnum Music Award for Band and Choir. Established in 2000, the Opus Magnum Award is given to the most deserving students in the SPSV music program. This award recognizes the talents of these individuals, as well as the time and effort they dedicated to our department and to our school. Angelina is also the recipient of the Trustee Scholarship from the Dominican University of California. Joshua John Barrera, cum laude. Javier Singh Bossi. Joseph Pierre Badu, summa cum laude is a recipient of the Western Undergraduate Exchange Scholarship from Boise State University and the East Bay Football Officials Association Scholarship. Asia Jordan Brown, cum laude. Isabella Nayeli Bustos, summa cum laude, is the recipient of a scholarship from the Seroptimist International of Vallejo. Aaron James Kamarsi. Ethan Terry Kerrigan, magna cum laude, is a recipient of the Trustee Scholarship from the Dominican University of California. Dean Justice Nicholas Carrion, summa cum laude. William Pulanco Castillo, summa cum laude is a recipient of the Trustee Scholarship from the Dominican University of California. Logan David Castor. Janelle Marie Cardenas Choi, summa cum laude, is a recipient of the Trustee Scholarship of the Dominican University of California. Isai Simon Contreras, Magna Cum Laude, is the recipient of the Terry Flynn Memorial Award, awarded to a young man who displays the qualities of fellowship, determination, and generosity of spirit. Jaylee Monet de Cousin Cruz. Maria Louise Custodio, Summa Cum Laude. Antonio John Makasib David, summa cum laude, is a recipient of the Provost Scholarship from the University of San Francisco. Daniela Tolosa David is a recipient of the Florence D. Stanley Memorial Scholarship, which is given to a deserving graduate. Florence Stanley sent her children to St. Vincent's and St. Patrick's High Schools. She was also employed in the office at St. Patrick's and St. Patrick's St. Vincent's for nearly 20 years. Mateo Isaiah Deloa. Autumn Star de Grazia, cum laude, is the female recipient of the St. Patrick St. Vincent Board of Regents Award given to a graduate who has been accepted to any post-secondary institution including community college, trade, or vocational school. Their criteria used to choose the recipients is based on their ability to demonstrate the following characteristics. Effort and school spirit, character, integrity, care for others, involvement in campus life, 
and exhibits Christian leadership. Devin Allen Dennis is the recipient of the Yavapai College Baseball Scholarship. Antonio James Diaz. Joseph Edward DeChoco. Angelo Dominguez. Lauren Simone Eaton. Nia Jolie Indires. Rushan J. Nicholas Fernandez is a recipient of the University of San Francisco Don's Merit Scholarship. Isileli Puliavea Fifita. Stephen Anthony Fogley. Cassius Kahayag Garado, summa cum laude. Sarah Nicole Garcia. August Ray Gawiran, summa cum laude. Samira Amari Gibbons is the recipient of the Jacqueline Boyette Scholarship, which honors one of the most popular teachers in SPSV history. The scholarship is given to a senior that has excelled in academics and extracurricular activities. Ashlyn Victoria Claire Glaser, cum laude. Anna Jeanette Gomez, magna cum laude is the recipient of the St. Mary's College Theology and Religious Studies Scholarship, the St. Mary's College Dean's Scholarship, and the St. Mary's College Cordero Scholarship. Emily Cassandra Gonzalez. Kennedy Michael Graves. Daniel Leonard Gutierrez. Kaya Marie Haro is the recipient of the J.C. Bertuzzi SPSV 2011 Memorial Scholarship Award, which is given in remembrance of J.C., a four-year varsity softball student athlete. It is presented to the graduating senior softball player who best embodies the joy, love, and enthusiasm J.C. had for her teammates and coaches, opponents, and most of all, life. Stephanie Danielle Shirley Hawking, cum laude. Ashley Giselle Ibarra, cum laude, is a recipient of the Latino Club Scholarship, El Exito Escolar and San Patricio San Vicente, and the Guadalupana Association of St. Basil's Church Scholarship. Ashley is also receiving the Provost Scholarship from Vanguard University of Southern California. Roman Vincent Jacinto. Deshaun Jeffrey Jackson is a recipient of the Athletic Basketball Scholarship from Washington State University. Aliyah Aquino Jacob, summa cum laude. Jin Zubwa. Alexi Monique Johnson is a recipient of the J.C. Bertuzzi SPSV 2011 Memorial Scholarship Award, given in remembrance of J.C., a four-year varsity softball student athlete. It is presented to the graduating senior softball player who best embodies the joy, love, and enthusiasm J.C. had for her teammates and coaches, opponents, and most of all, life. Andrew Mackenzie Jones Magna cum laude. Georgia Hannah Curley. Amber Lynn Larkin, summa cum laude. Salea Isabella Leva. Angelo Xavier Leon, 
is the recipient of the St. Mary Scholarship and the University of San Francisco Scholarship. Julian Francis Limjoko, cum laude, is the recipient of the Viviani Scholarship, established in the memory of Peter Viviani, class of 1958. Peter was on the swim and track and field teams before his early passing. Samantha Solano Lowe, summa cum laude, is the recipient of the Susan Lyon Christensen St. Vincent Class of 1961 Memorial Scholarship, awarded to a senior who is of good moral character and has been of service to the school, preference given to a child of an alumnus or alumna. She is also a recipient of the Opus Magnum Music Award for Choir, established in 2000 and awarded to the most deserving students in the SPSV music program. This award recognizes the talents of these individuals as well as the time and effort they dedicated to the music department and the school. Samantha is also a recipient of the trustee scholarship of the Dominican University of California. Alexis Maria Lyon, summa cum laude, is the recipient of the Bernice and Jerry Dana Scholarship Fund. Sponsored by a generous gift from the Benicia Portuguese Hall, the scholarship is awarded to a student who plans on going to a four-year college. The criteria for the scholarship are based on citizenship, leadership, academic achievement, and need. Princess Lauren Gabrielle McKee Hayden Jane McMahon. Kaylin Olivia Monroe. Jaden George Paul Munoz. Jordan Kendall Murphy, cum laude. Wilfred Coobo Nato. Madeline Lauren Ogden, summa cum laude. Hope Suzanne Aller, magna cum laude. Chloe Deanne Ortega is the recipient of the Athletic Volleyball Scholarship from California State University, East Bay. Mark Peter Pasmandi, cum laude. Samaya Michelle Pupiro Granizo is the recipient of the Pareto Scholarship, which honors the memory of Rudolph Pareto and is donated to young man or woman who is interested in a career in criminal justice. Samaya is also receiving the Latino Club Scholarship, El Exito Escolar on San Patricio San Vicente. Matthew Chase Quinn. Michael E. Regan. Cum laude, is the recipient of the Provost Scholarship from the University of the Pacific. Kayla Real Ravello is the recipient of the Lori Clark Scholarship awarded to the student who has demonstrated a potential to obtain a degree of high learning to the college of her choice by securing at least a B average, has demonstrated a profound concern for her friends, teachers and classmates by her unselfish attitude towards the needs of others, has been active in school activities and has shown a spirit of enthusiasm for the school, and finally has consistently practiced her belief in Catholicism to carry out the Christian message. Kayla is also the recipient of the Athletic Basketball Scholarship from the University of Hawaii at Hilo, the Dean Scholarship from Hawaii Pacific University, the Christian Schools Consortium Scholarship from Grand Canyon University, the Grand Canyon University Faculty Scholarship, the St. Mary Scholarship, and she was admitted into the Western Undergraduate Exchange at the University of Hawaii, the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Anthony Michael Reyes. Kayla Ruiz, summa cum laude. Tamia Yasmin Sadler is the recipient of the Coach Alfred Trapps Memorial Scholarship. Mr. Trapps was a coach at St. Patrick High School. This scholarship, in his honor, is sponsored by the Pappas family 
presenting the scholarship is Mark Pappas from the St. Patrick's class of 1972. The criteria for the scholarship are that the student played sports for SPSV and must be attending a four-year college. Tamiya is also the recipient of the Athletic Basketball Scholarship at the University of Washington. Colin Michael Samansky, Manya Cum Laude, is the male recipient of the St. Patrick St. Vincent Board of Regents Award, awarded to a graduate who has been accepted to any post-secondary institution, including community college, trade, or vocational school. The criteria used to choose the recipients are based on their ability to demonstrate the following characteristics, effort in school spirit, character, integrity, care for others, involvement in campus life, and exhibits Christian leadership. Colin is also the recipient of the Richard Anthony Steinberger SPSV Class of 1990 Memorial Scholarship. This scholarship is awarded to a senior who must be of Greek, Italian, or German heritage and must be planning to further his or her education. Bishop Alan Cruz Samante. John Ray Sicad San Pedro, summa cum laude is the recipient of the Brother William F. O'Sullivan Award for General Excellence and the David Allen Abruzzini Award, 2019. Jalen Scott. Gabriel Santiago Silvera, magna cum laude, is the recipient of the Monsignor Thomas A. Kirby Scholarship. Natalie Nayak Soto. Alton Pascoguin Sturgis, summa cum laude, is a recipient of the Stephen Tompkins Memorial Fund Scholarship, which is awarded to a senior who is a good student, excels in track, and is going to college. Jack Raymond Sutter. Matthew William Thompson, summa cum laude, is a recipient of the Kenneth Newman Memorial Scholarship, which is awarded to a graduating senior for scholastic achievement, inspirational attitude, and full participation in the many programs that SPSV has to offer. Matthew is also receiving the David Allen Abruzzini Award 2019. Cade Neil Tobias. Joshua Roland Taganon, magna cum laude, is a recipient of the Provost Scholarship from the University of San Francisco. Marie Elizabeth Martin Trum, summa cum laude. Hannah Jade Valenzuela. Isabel Velasquez. Kyle Jack Weisberg. Havert Wilton IV. Nancy. Zhao Hoshin. Summa cum laude. Ocean. Zhou Hai Yang. Is the recipient of the University of Connecticut Scholarship. As a sign of your graduation, please move your tassels to the left. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my special privilege to present to you the class of 2020. I now introduce the Most Reverend Bishop Jaime Soto of the Diocese of Sacramento, who will give our closing benediction. My dear graduates of St. Patrick St. Vincent High School, uh, the graduates of the year 2020, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
May the Lord look upon you and your families kindly and give you his peace always. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the online chapter of the 32nd commencement of the St. Patrick's St. Vincent Catholic High School. It has been our pleasure to work with this class. We are proud of their leadership, their kindness, and their spirit. We congratulate our graduates and wish them well. My faculty and I will soon see you on campus where Bishop Soto will award your children their diplomas. Please check your email for a copy of the diploma pickup schedule. Thank you and congratulations graduates. Thank you for attending our Class of 2020 Commencement Celebration. We kindly ask for your continued support with a gift to our 150th Anniversary Appeal, supporting the years of Catholic education in Vallejo.